The VO Meter, measuring your voiceover progress. Whether you're a veteran voice actor, just starting out, or don't even know how to set a level, we're here to help you avoid the pitfalls along your voiceover path to success. The VO Meter is brought to you by Voice Actor Websites, Voice123, Studio Bricks, Global Voice Acting Academy, JMC Demos, and Sennheiser. The Video Meter is produced in part using Source Connect, made by source-elements.com. And now, your hosts, Paul Stefano and Sean Daly. Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode 98 of the VO Meter, measuring your voiceover progress. Today, we're going to be talking with the Hindenburg CEO, Chris Modis. What is Hindenburg, and why is it named after a terrible tragedy? You'll find out. But the the short and sweet is is that it's a very sophisticated uh, DAW, or digital audio workstation, that automates a lot of the time-consuming tasks that it or that happens when recording audio for podcasts, audiobooks, and e-learning in video game projects. So I got to meet these guys when I was at VO Atlanta in the exhibit hall, and I was just blown away by their demonstrations. In my opinion, the timing couldn't be better because of a current event I want to talk about in a few minutes. And we'll get to that right after our... VoiceOver Extra brings you the VO Meter reference levels. Uh, seriously, guys, that's the best you could come up with? Hey, it's your show. So, Sean, what's happening cool. in your VO world? Well, just been auditioning like crazy. I think I talked about it last episode, but the audio drama that I'm cast in, March to the Capitol, has wrapped up recording, and so we should be hearing from uh, the producer in a couple of weeks with the edited material, and I can't wait to blast that on the socials and (laughs) tell people to listen to me. But anyways, it was a fun project. Uh, It was great doing some directed sessions, although I totally, like, uh, effed up my voice a little bit because I had to was playing a very deplorable character who gets uh, gets his comeuppance and he he dies by hanging by being thrown off a platform and then hung so Ooh. I had to like scream death nail style and then like have a catch like a choking like effect right after yeah. that and after a few takes of that I was just like ah my voice <laughs> but just a reminder to to warm up thoroughly for especially for character work other than that, um, just my usual stint of e-learning projects. A couple of cool things over at Global Voice Academy, too. I just hosted a webinar last weekend with uh, with Jeff Howell. It was on ADR and dubbing, which is an area that he often directs for. Yeah, I saw and that. It's I really an area attend, that's really... But unfortunately, <laughs> was was busy with some family stuff. Well, luckily, the recording is available for purchase. So, And as a member, you can actually watch it for free, in case you didn't remember. <laughs> Well, I did remember that, and I will go back and watch it because I'm not only a client, I'm also a member or something like that. That's right. That's right. <laughs> no, I take advantage of those things all the time, and when I don't get to see these events live when I'm moderating, then I'll usually go back and watch the recordings too. It's probably better so, for me yeah, anyway, so that was there's great. no way I could have participated and not made snarky comments to Jeff, so it's better for the whole audience <laughs> I wasn't there. <laughs> Just would have distracted me in the chat, I'm sure, make yes. my job harder. <laughs> no, I love, I love Jeff, but he's also a good friend, so... It'll be hard for me to sit there and and concentrate. Hard not to rib him, but <laughs> or just have some fun, yeah. Indeed, indeed. Well, I mean, we we usually play it fast and loose. A little, uh, a little friendly comments in the chat never hurt anyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so we had that webinar that wrapped up. It's available to watch uh, to purchase the recording or watch if you're a member. And then uh, we actually have some new coaches on our GVA coaching roster. Saw that so too. Very just, exciting. Yeah, yeah. We are very happy to welcome Courtney Lynn and Jennifer Sunbell. Uh, these young ladies are dynamite in the areas of commercial and video games and animation and anime right now uh, in a variety of projects and big names like Monster High and uh, League of Legends and Diablo 4. Um, and, and I just got to work with Jennifer today in one of our coach-led workouts, and I just... Uh, like I wish I could bottle her energy as like an alternative power source because she's just amazing, <laughs> incredible, uh, very enthusiastic, very energetic, and just a very encouraging uh, coach. So she passed the the first test with flying colors. That's great. Welcome to both. Awesome. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to working with Courtney at the end of the month. So that pretty much wraps up my VO reference levels. What's going on in your VO world, Paul? Production, production, production. Well, and one audiobook. So 
I've been buried, which is not a bad thing. It's just uh, the timing kind of surprised me because normally this is a pretty slow time of year. I actually was at the beach on vacation with the family last week, so that's probably one of the reasons I'm backed up. But uh, I'm currently producing, directing, and editing two audiobook projects for Twin Flame Studios. Normally I just do the remote direction and uh, um, recording, but now I'm doing all aspects of these two projects is because of the way it worked out. The first one is called An Other World, and it's by an author named Hanif Fazl, and it's about uh, overcoming white supremacy as a Indian and Mexican, a man of Indian and Mexican heritage in the Pacific Northwest, so it might be of interest to you because he grew up in Portland, Oregon, which mm -hmm. um, he describes as the whitest city in America, which I didn't know. It is, historically so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there he, is he a reason for that. I know. He cited, <laughs> he cited all of those, and kind of kind of terrifying that there were actual laws on the books that kept it so. So, yeah, very interesting. And then I'm also working on a book called The Mirrored Door, Break Through the Hidden Barrier That Locks Successful Women in Place. This is by Ellen Tafe. She's a professor at Northwestern University and is speaking about uh, the glass ceiling, or in, in her case, she describes it more as a door, the mirrored door, and how to break through those barriers as a woman in the workplace. So those are pretty interesting. And I'm also narrating an audiobook for the first time in a while that I landed on Fiverr, of all places, and it's above union rates, and it's a really interesting book. It's a crime drama that takes place in early 20th century Boston. So that's been fun because I've had to pull off a couple of different accents of Boston, Rhode Island, and I've been using my, my regular accent as the narrator because it doesn't necessarily say they're all from that area, but it's a, it's a cop drama similar to The Departed. Uh, it was a, a, a famous <laughs> movie a couple of years ago. So that's been fun. I just completed that, and that should be out in a couple of weeks. It's called um, Deceived. So look for that wherever fine audiobooks are sold. And then finally, on Monday, I restart my public address announcing for, for the fall. It'll still be summer, but going into the fall for the Athletes Unlimited Pro Women's Lacrosse League. I did that last year. It was a referral to the job from our friend Bob Johnson, who's been on the show several times. And he and I are the two announcers for this professional league that is all about empowering women. They do only women's sports. They have volleyball, softball, basketball, and lacrosse, and because Baltimore is kind of the, the hotbed of lacrosse, um, it's hosted at the USA Lacrosse Headquarters, which also houses the Lacrosse National Hall of Fame. So that's just up the road from me in Sparks, Maryland, technically, but it's basically a suburb of Baltimore. I'll be doing that for the next month. So very excited about getting started with Athletes Unlimited again. Great stuff. I just remembered two other things. First thing, um, I got invited to my first con appearance, so that's cool. As a, as a <laughs> it's speaker called, uh, or guest? Yeah, yeah, as a as a presenter, um, and it's called WindyCon, and uh, it's kind of like a sci-fi authors conference actually. But one of the um, one of the producers or coordinators is an old friend of mine that I worked with before I was teaching in Japan. When back when I was still in college, trying to get my degrees in the summer, I would do these English summer camps in Japan. And this this woman, Reina, happened to be one of the staff, and she knew I wanted to be a voice actor back then. And she's like, she's like, if I can ever get you a con appearance, I will. And lo, oh God, how many years this has been? At least a decade, she came true on her promise. So just keeping in mind that sometimes networking takes a while, but it happens. Wow, that's <laughs> awesome. Where is it? Uh, so it's going to be in Chicago in, well, um, makes sense. Windy in November. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, in the Windy City. So uh, it's going to be in November. Really looking forward to that. They get to fly me out, and I get a little stipend, and uh, I'm going to be leading a few panels on how to... Um, as far as I know, I'm the only voice actor there, so it's kind of interesting to be a big fish in a small pond in that way. So I'm kind of just going to do like an introductory workshop on on being a VO in 2023, as well as like sort of the basics on audio recording, right? Because I mean, whether you're an author, maybe you're interested in in doing an audiobook, for example, or or a podcast, or some other way to just capture your story, or even just capture your your thought processes, your brainstorming. So. Um, so I'll be doing those workshops and then doing signings throughout the con and getting to uh, be a bit of an MC as well. So really looking forward to that. No, oh, it's really cool. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And You're then the, the other one is kind of personal. 
What's that? Go to the wiener circle when you're there. You're not a vegetarian, are you? I can't remember. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> and I do like a famous hot dog place called the Wiener Circle, where it's sort of like um, the Soup Nazi or the Philadelphia Cheesesteak People, but it's their version. It's a hot dog stand where they yell at you if you don't order right. <laughs> okay. Well, I imagine I have to get it the Chicago way with like the peppers and onions. And oh, all yeah. That. The Jardinier. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Sounds awesome. I'm getting hungry thinking about it. It's about lunchtime right now. Um, and that, So that was the one thing. And then the second one, I'm kind of embarrassed to admit it's been many a year since I've been to your friendly neighborhood dentist. And I don't know why exactly. It just kind of, I, maybe it's from international travel or like the, the expense aspect of it or just trying to find good insurance. But it's been a couple of years since I went and like, luckily, no no major issues, but I had a dental cleaning, and I was just amazed at how, like, I had had some, um, some gum inflammation because, because of the long absence from the dentist office. And I was like, huh, who could imagine that oral hygiene would be so important for voice sex? <laughs> but, but the point of that story is we've talked about the importance of vocal health and wellness and, and visiting an ENT, but obviously, like, taking care of your teeth, taking care of your gums, and, and listening to your dentist instructions, like flossing more in my case, um, will will just aid your performance in so many ways. Like my mouth feels so much more comfortable and in my articulation has improved because again, the inflammation has reduced. And so there's less obstruction of my tongue and teeth. Um, and, and again, I'm just feeling more comfortable. I'm feeling more relaxed in the booth. And I'm just feeling like an idiot for waiting so long. <laughs> so, um, so learn from my mistakes. Take good care of your teeth, not just your throat, because it all it all adds up as far as vocal well or health and wellness goes. Interesting. I, I've actually had the same situation. I haven't been for a few years. It was mostly the pandemic. I used to be pretty religious, mm-hmm. but I'm pretty fanatical about cleaning my teeth. We were just talking offline about my dad being a professional musician. He plays woodwinds, so he was always obsessed with his teeth as as a as a professional um, musician flossing after every meal, making sure you brush all the time because he's afraid of losing his teeth because you can't grip onto a clarinet mouthpiece if you have no front teeth. Exactly. For people who don't know, you need that. To, you need strong teeth to, to form the embouchure right. uh, when exactly. working with a reed instrument. So mm-hmm. I've always kind of been the same way. In fact, I usually floss before a session because I'm always worried about having stuff in my teeth affecting the way it sounds. It's probably overkill, oh, but it, it doesn't hurt for sure. Thank you for not judging me, Paul. <laughs> like, that felt so embarrassing. Like, everyone's got those weird... Pho- like, like I, I was like, do I have a dental phobia? What's stopping me? You know, maybe it's just like you don't want to hear what you think they're going to tell you or maybe the expense of it. Like, all that added up, I guess. <laughs> well, I have, like, sort of a phys- physical aversion to the, the cleaning tools, which I didn't know not everybody had until I was, like, almost 50. Like, three years ago, basically... I went to the dentist, and you know the the scrapers they use? Um, mm-hmm. To me, that's like absolute torture. The, the sound and the feeling of it scraping my teeth is that feeling of like ch- hands on a chalkboard, or in my mm-hmm. case, I had the same sort of sensory sensory problems when I use sandpaper. Um, it drives me crazy. I, didn't, I can't really stand it. And I didn't know that wasn't the case for everybody until, like I said, about three years ago, and the dentist said, why haven't you ever told your dentist about that before? And I said, I just thought that's how it was. And nobody likes coming to the dentist, right? It sucks. And they said, no, you have like a serious aversion to this to this cleaning tool. So you need to, to do another option. So they have this other option called ultrasonic, which is basically just high-speed water pick that they use in the office. So mm, now, mm-hmm. once I learned that, I just asked them to use only that. And if the, they only scrape if they have like something really stuck on, on the teeth. But for a long time, I would hate going to the dentist just because of that. And I guess it, it pays to know your health professionals and, and be have a relationship with them so you can ask those questions because I had no idea that I was, I mean, I'm sure I'm not the only one, but I had no idea it was a small percentage of people that had that sort of aversion to that sound and, and feeling. No, I, I believe it. I, I believe it's called misophonia or, or like basically bad sound that, and you just have a very visceral reaction to it. Yeah, it could be that. And actually my daughter has been diagnosed with misophonia for other reasons, so... It's possible that I've had that all my life. I just didn't know. It was just certain things that, that bother me. And other people in my family, mm-hmm. too. Like, my, my brother always had an issue with banging metal silverware together. My mom would be putting the, the dishes away from the dishwasher, and he'd be going, Oh, God, stop. I can't take it. And we were like, What is wrong with you? But it's probably the exact mm-hmm. same thing. Yeah, brains are interesting, and everyone's operates a little differently. Yeah. Uh, that wraps up our VO meter reference levels. It's now time for... 
questionable gear purchase. So neither of us have really bought anything or been sent anything, hint, hint, manufacturers. But um, <laughs> one thing I want to talk about is there's been a new announcement in the world of recording from the developer of Twisted Wave, Thomas. And it's not so good, in my opinion. He's actually decided to roll out a subscription model. And it's working a little bit differently than some of the other uh, subscription-based services. But I'm still a little perturbed. And uh, I immediately said I was going to jump ship. I've sort of climbed down off that <laughs> ledge a little bit because uh, I'm still using it right now, actually. And uh, mm -hmm. let's talk about what, what we think about this, the move to subscription-based because for the longest time, that was the biggest selling point for me was that Twisted Wave was one-and-done payment. It was very affordable, and um, you never had to pay out of pocket again. So what are your thoughts on the change that Thomas has invoked? I definitely have mixed feelings about it because, like you, I mean, I love Twisted Way because ease of use. Like, it is fairly inexpensive in the over the decade it's been around. It's gone from like eighty dollars to a hundred dollars, which is still not bad, I think. But that being said, I I really do understand the appeal of a subscription model for software developers, right? I mean, instead of having to do, um, like. Or, I mean, instead of charging people for updated versions, it's just kind of baked into the model, right? And and it's a lot easier for them to maintain as a developer. So, and, and uh, it's, it's unfortunate, but I feel like that's just the direction that software in general is going. It is becoming a, a bit of SaaS, like software as a service, more than, than as a product anymore. Yeah, and it's certainly, certainly not alone, and not even alone... It, it, even the industry, voiceover or, or recording, audio production is not alone. It's it's the it's the subscription model for video games, for audio platforms. You know, Spotify and and Pandora, Xbox Live. So everything is going that way. And I suppose on the one hand, it probably was inevitable, but I still don't like it. <laughs> Me too. Get half of my line subscription models. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Thomas <laughs> listens to the show. Probably not. Nobody listens to the show. But um, if he is. Maybe there's some other way to to grandfather in people with a smaller either contribution or pay as pay as you can type of type of uh, platform. I'm thinking of uh, Askamet, which is a, a WordPress plugin that um, that captures phishing emails. Um, that's a that's a model that I like where you can put in a donation base a, a donation uh, and they will take out that amount every month based on what you can pay. So I don't feel like I use it that much because I have a very small website that hardly anyone visits, maybe one or two people a day. So I pay them $10 a month, and I feel like that's pretty fair. But you could pay any amount that that uh, that you like, and I wonder if that's something they could, that Thomas maybe could investigate. For people who have had it for multiple years like we have, um, just a suggestion. I don't know really what else the answer is, but... Uh, like I said, I'm a little annoyed right now. As soon as it happened, I was on the Facebook group saying, Hell no, I won't pay. Uh, I'm <laughs> switching to something else right away. Then I realized there really weren't that many things out there that were even an option anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. It's like, I, it's, so, I mean, it's been so integral to our businesses. So, I, I, again, I just have mixed feelings about it because I totally see where Thomas is coming from, and he's definitely done a lot of unpaid work for the VO community with all of the, like, uh, and being so receptive to feedback and making constant iterations. Um, so, so some people would argue that this is kind of like retroactively paying him back for all that, but it's, but again, it's people's budgets are different and some people might not be able to do a subscription model. So I, I just, I guess I see both sides. <laughs> yeah. So for, for your information, as of right now, you can update to the current version, which is, what, 29? I'm trying to see what I have here. Uh, about Twisted Wave. You can update to 28.7. And then if you go to version 29 or above, that's when you will have to go to a subscription model. And Thomas did say that this last version... 28.7 you can stay on for as long as you like you will not get additional updates but it shouldn't fail i don't understand why it would um if it does then we really have a problem but if you want to stay with the current version up to 28.7 you can do that and then move to a subscription model if you want to get further updates 
All right. So that wraps up our questionable gear purchases. If you have your own questionable gear purchases that you want to share your stories, please let us know. Send us your audio or have you on the podcast. We'd love to hear your stories. So we'll hear from the co-founder and CEO of Hindenburg. Speaking of new DAWs, that might be an option uh, if you're not if you're interested in moving away from a certain other one. Uh, in just a moment, right after a word from these sponsors. Studio Bricks designs and creates the highest performing portable sound isolation booths. Their professionally perfected acoustics enhances your performance and takes your recording to their maximum quality from your home studio. Forget about managing noise conflicts with your neighbors and family. Pursue your passion for voiceover on your own time and on your own terms. Walgreens, because it's flu season, you live in a place with doorknobs and handrails and, you know, people. We tried booking a vacation rental on one of those other websites. They don't always tell you everything. The stars take it to the red carpet. We are back live from the red carpet. California leads the way for change in America, and so does Kamala Harris. Rated M for Mature. Claire Redfield. And who exactly are you? So, yeah, what hashtag should I use to describe a grown man in a tuxedo wrestling a goat? Prior to 1933, many of them belonged to a variety of political parties that were now outlawed in Germany. This is the story of how Q got curly. Quinn was crazy about curls. Curly fries, curly straws, curly-haired dogs. Hey, Jay Michael here. Thanks for listening to the VO Meter podcast. It's one of my favorites. If you're looking for a great demo like the ones you just heard, check out jmcdemos.com for more information. Hey, Paul, did you know Voice123, the largest online marketplace for voice actors, just celebrated its 20th year anniversary? Whoa, really? That's amazing. Doesn't really surprise me, though. I've used Voice123 since the beginning of my career. I remember way back in my first year where I booked a job as a hypnotist. I actually got to say, you are getting very sleepy on a radio ad. The whole thing was super easy. They even paid me right away for the audition and said that was all they needed. I've been a member of Voice123 for years as well. I've always enjoyed their upfront policies, ability to contact clients directly, and their commitment to the voiceover industry. Totally. CEO Rolf Veldman has appeared on the show before, and in every interaction I've had with him and the company, I've felt a sense of trust, like they really care. Well, if you want a great place to find your VO niche and find yourself as a voice actor, visit voice123.com for more information. Now, VO Meter listeners can also get 15% off premium tier memberships. For more information, visit our website and click on the Click Here to Save 15% banner on our sponsors page. Voice123, speak for yourself. So before we get to the interview with Chris, I wanted to play a brief pre-interview we did about the origin of the name of Hindenburg. Frankly, I can't figure out a good way to transition this in seamlessly, so you get a chance to see behind the scenes or hear behind the scenes, as it were. The little discussion Chris and I had about the name of Hindenburg and where it comes from and why you would choose the name of a company after such a horrible, tragic event in human history. But... It's interesting, and I think you'll understand after he explains it. It's actually named after the uh, the blimp that pro- that blew up. Right. Um, interesting choice. <laughs> well, you know, we had we had a, we have a history which makes it make sense, but uh, history has moved on, so to speak. We uh, originally came from the radio business, and um, the day the Hindenburg blew up was also the day that Herb Morrison, by pure coincidence, was out there testing the very first field recording equipment. Really? Hmm. So the you might have heard his report from the field. Uh, you know, he's basically got this 50 kilo, 100 pound, 120 pound, I believe that is, machine with an engineer, and they're recording straight to vinyl, I believe, in the field in this prototype. Wow. And he chose that place by basically because it's where the rich and famous came in and it looked cool. There was no real reason. There was also some story about the TWA pilot giving him a lift from Chicago or something. And he was just there. And then when it exploded, he broke into this iconic reportage, the very first ever from the field where, oh, the humanity, the humanity, and he's describing what's going on in a very emotional and yet 
considered uh, report. So if he'd flubbed that, obviously no one would have ever heard about it, but he happened to do it really well, which became the very first field recording and the first outdoor production or radio broadcast production that went was broadcast coast to coast because now you had a vinyl recording that you could duplicate and send from station to station and they could then broadcast it locally because at that time in 37 it was only live really so for radio nerds a seminal moment for the rest of the world it's like what it was a blimp that grew up and that was a really bad idea to call your company in the that makes sense though i get it now Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the interview portion of this episode of the VO Meter. Our guest today is Chris Modis, CEO and partner of Hindenburg Systems. Hindenburg is a non-destructive audio editor designed specifically for spoken word recording. The software has several versions catering to the needs of voice actors, podcasters, and narrators with a fully featured suite of tools that automate the most repetitive and technical tasks of your audio workflow so you can get professional, fully spec audio fast and save yourself thousands of hours every year. As current CEO of Hindenburg, Chris has more than 25 years of experience in entrepreneurship, management, and business development in London, Stockholm, and Copenhagen. Before joining the Hindenburg team in 2011, Chris successfully founded several media companies, including Deadline Film and TV, Deadline Games, Vision Park Entertainment, and Six Ravens Capital. Please join us in welcoming our guest, Chris Modis. How are you doing, Chris? Thanks very much, Sean. I'm very well. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. So tell us about yourself. How did you come to become Hindenburg CEO? Um, how, how long have we got? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as long as you want to tell us. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, my, as as you mentioned, I have a a background um, in media, and um, my previous company was a games production company called Deadline Games, and I had a a business partner for many many years called Simon. Now, by uh, because Denmark is small, um, Simon's wife worked with Nick, who founded uh, Hindenburg at the Danish Broadcasting Corporation. And when Nick had the idea for this product, he was looking for someone who had uh, business experience to help uh, create a company out of his his idea that he and his and Preben, the other partner, had been working on for a while and had launched the first initial version on of um, initially Hindenburg was actually not designed to be or created to be a commercial company. It was it was originally decided that it was well, sorry designed because Nick was in in Zambia and uh, working on a, a project to create a community radio station um, in quite far out of the, the, the in the country, and uh, he was a bit stuck for what software to use in an environment where um, basically all the locals had a generally maybe a three or four year education were very very good at telling stories and you know storytelling was an integral part of the community but introducing uh, at that time this is 2008 7 8 introducing a pc uh, and and software into the into the this environment was very challenging for the locals to use so he wanted to create Hindenburg just as a a simple giveaway product for that um uh for that uh, market it's not a market really it's <laughs> for, for that for that audience yeah. audience thank you um and then he came back to denmark and he shared it with his uh, friends here the danish broadcasting corporation who were like wow this is exactly what we need they were all journalists they didn't have the technical news to to make uh, to make um, good quality audio, and they would be giving that responsibility, much like you know, podcasters and voiceover home home studio voiceover artists are today. And so then they decide, well, maybe we can make a business out of that, and uh, contacted me since I had just uh, shuttered our previous company and asked if I wanted to join um, as a CEO. Wonderful. So. What is Hindenburg, and who is it for? Yeah, uh, so 
I mean, as I, I mentioned, the initial start of the company came from radio. This is in 2008, 2009, and, and, and you, know, I, you know, podcasting was a thing then, but it was very limited. And voiceover narration, voiceover work was very much studio-oriented with big, um, you know, where voiceover artists had very little uh, input in their, their work. So we started with uh, creating Hindenburg as a product which would you know, basically aim to remove the technical divide between the creators, the you know, journalists, podcasters, voiceover artists, and, um, and the technology and, no, and their and their story, you know, by doing a lot of, um, if, if if you think of it this way, um, since we know that our audience is going to be, or our consumers, our users are going to be people who want to work with voice, spoken word, we also know a lot more about what the end product should be. So that allows us to automate a lot of the sound engineering that you would not be able to do in a product like Twisted Wave or, 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 or Pro Tools, where the main uh, user base for those are music or other audiences, where it doesn't really make sense to talk about a linear storyline. It doesn't make sense about you know having a, a, a balance in the levels in the same way as it does in spoken word. So the whole of Hindenburg is, around, is built around this concept that we're only for spoken word. We address the two primary markets or primary user groups, the podcasting radio people who are more um, telling a story in a in, in their own way, and then voiceover artists who are working from a script usually. So we've developed two products, one called Narrator specifically for the voiceover artist, including audiobooks, and the other one for radio and podcast, which is called Hindenburg Pro. Well, that's awesome. I know a lot of, I mean, it's very refreshing for voice talent to have like a system or excuse me, to have a program that's developed for them instead of having to adapt something for music to get it to mm. work to what we want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, I would say that it's very much like, you know, if you're going to hammer a nail, you'd like to be able to look at the size of the nail and get the right hammer to use it. We were just talking about how it is more focused than some of the other options available, like, say, mm -hmm. Audacity, Adobe Audition, or Twisted Wave. Why should voice talent be interested in this software over some of those popular options? Sure. Um, uh, if we stick to, uh, since we're talking about, uh, you know, voice talent in voiceover primarily here, let's let's talk about Hinnemug Narrator. So um, Hinnemug Narrator, as I say, we know what you're looking to do is record a larger series of uh, recordings that are related. We know that you would like to hit a certain uh, level. We use loudness as, as the base for, for setting levels. So we use a, a number which is around minus 21 LUFS, which is a good broadcast quality level. Uh, we, want, we know that you want everything to be balanced. Um, we know that you might have maybe um, 100 files in the case of an e-learning e project or, you know, 50 chapters or subsets in a book that all have to be named correctly, uh, put together correctly. And we also know that you want your levels across all these recordings to be balanced and your EQ to be set so that it's the same. Now, with Hindenburg, um, so if let's take the example of Twisted Wave, Paul, I know that you're using right now, mm -hmm. uh, which is shameful, of course, I should have <laughs> said ahead of time, but fair enough. Um, so in if you were doing a, a, a voiceover production, like let's say an e-learning, uh, where you had an Excel sheet with mm, 200 uh, voiceover, uh, so e-learning prompts that you had to read, um, you know, as, as I, I've been introduced to it, uh, is each prompt would have to have a very specific name when you, you know, for the file, as you put it out, um, you might have, you know, what you're actually going to be saying. And then on the side, you might have some sort of a comment to what you're going to be saying, a direction of some sort or a con or a, um, a uh, uh, context that you're going to be saying this in. And, and of course, in a, in a games voicing script, that might be a thousand lines or 2000 lines. Now, with Hindenburg, a uh, narrator, what you would do, you would just import that whole Excel sheet and 
you would be able to just read all your lines in one go because they all come on the screen in front of you. You can just go, you know, well, I don't have the imagination to make up a script on, on as we go, but let's say it was like, grab the loot, jump now. Oh, I'll take that. Now, in our typically in Twisted Wave, you'd have to record each of those, export it, name it. Obviously, you'd have to check that it's balanced correctly and it's then, and, and the sound engineering is done. Then you would export it. Then you would save it into some folder and start all over again. Now, in Hindenburg, you would actually just read the whole lot, one after the other. And between each line, you just do a little right click uh, so, or your know, right arrow or some quiet tap, preferably. And it will automatically set a marker at the end of each one. It will automatically set your levels for you. And when you're done, you hit uh, export and it'll actually break it down into all those files with the correct file names into one folder that you can then give send to your, your customer. So that's just one example of because we know what you're trying to do, how we can design everything to be much, much faster and where you can be doing things on the fly rather than having to always break your flow to do all the technical stuff, which, you know, I mean, I know that with time, we all get kind of interested in the, the technology, but at the end of the day, as a voiceover artist, you are making your money on how fast you can produce not on how well you know the technology. The faster you can produce and the higher quality you can deliver, that is at the end of the day, the basis for you making a living. So that is what we're trying to support. I hope that made sense. In Absolutely. And I, I was so impressed when I got to see some of these features in action at VO Atlanta. And, and mm -hmm. one of the ones that I thought was extremely useful, aside from the teleprompting and the file exporting, was um, you actually have processing or mastering presets set mm -hmm. up according to the the specifications of not only acx but find away voices so two of the most popular audio book publishers you mm -hmm. have a just incredible like time saving step implemented right into the software yes correct so so basically you know if you let's take the the the, the, the audiobook scenario so, I mean, the one challenge we have, I have to admit, is the fact that a lot of publishers can only provide a PDF of their, of their book. And that kind of, it's a, it's a bit of a pity because we know they have Word documents and so on. It would be much easier for us to bring in a Word document. But let's, let's assume for, for the sake of making me sound good that it's a Word document that you got with the structure, you got your chapters and so on. You can just import that whole Word document because your Word document is set up correctly by the publisher, it would have, you know, chapters, headers, and so on, which means that you've got not only the whole script, but you've got this, the, the structure of the whole book that you're reading. Again, just like in the e-learning or the, the game script uh, um, example I just gave, you can read your whole book without having to stop and do engineering along the way per chapter. You can just go through the whole book chapter by chapter. Um, some publishers in, in other something, do you guys have something like Storytel or Podimo over there? They're like, uh, they're competitors to Audible, I guess, where you subscribe and you get free access to as many audiobooks as you'd like. Oh. Okay. Um, so I with, believe Spotify's those, model for audiobooks is like that. Well, with with find a way, yes, it's it's coming along that path. So that's been quite prevalent here in, in in Europe for a while. So they want you, for example, to deliver everything with a specification, which is that each uh, audio file may not be longer than an hour, but you also have to have a break at the end of each chapter, so that you would have to break. Let's say if you had one chapter that was one hour and ten minutes, you'd actually have to make a one hour file and a 10 minute file, and then the next chapter, break it up as a, so Hindenburg will do that automatically for you. Break it up, name it, and put them in that folder in the same way as I described with the, uh, the game script. And again, all your post-production is done on the fly as you're working. Now, in the case you just mentioned, Sean, with ACX or, or find a way, what we'll also do is we have the same validator built into Hindenburg as the one that they use at ACX or, 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 or Audible to check uh, that you've hit the specs, you know, X number of seconds before and after a chapter break, 
um, pauses of a certain length, noise floor levels, um, naming conventions and, and whatever they've they've thought of. And what we do is we'll actually run through your book when you're done, check it against the specs, and we can actually correct things like pauses, levels, noise levels um, for the whole book for you. And, and then just say, right, done. In three seconds, your post is done. You've validated, you checked, you can export it to ACX. Wow. That would be a lifesaver. As I mentioned, I've done a lot of audiobooks, and it takes much longer than that in most cases. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, th that's that's kind of our, our kind of pitch, if you like, why why we feel that we're a better product for this market and, you know, for people who are doing what we're making it for. I mean, I would never tell anyone to use Inbook as a door for music production. That doesn't make any sense. But by the same token, I would never tell anyone to use Pro Tools for voiceover. Mm -hmm. production because it's it's built for something else so we talked about the, the different versions and mm -hmm. obviously we're on a podcast right now and i know we actually have a lot of listeners who also host their own podcast so let's talk about mm -hmm. that version and how that can benefit podcasters so we've actually just released version two of our hindenburg pro product um, which is the one that's made for um, podcasting and radio production it has uh it originally was called Hinburg Journalist because, you know, 2008, the idea that there would be enough podcasters around <laughs> to, to make podcasts the size. I mean, I, I was possibly a little short-sighted at the time, but, you know, we we we, we uh, adapted and now we just called it Hinburg Pro. So Hinburg Pro, again, um, multi-track editor, just in case uh, I haven't mentioned that, as is the book uh, narrator product, it's a multi-track editor. So you can do multi-layered uh, work with any of these if you want to do uh, soundscapes and so on for you, if it's one of those kind of uh, audio books. But yeah, back to Hinnemig Pro. Um, again, uh, we have a lot of the basic features that will make your life so much faster as a podcaster. So every time you record something, we use broadcast standards to measure your levels. If you have two or three guests in on the show or two or three people in the show we obviously match the levels automatically between the the people on the show uh, we use loudness for this again and we can get into loudness if that's interesting for your audience um, one of my favorite stupidly small and ridiculous subjects that i love to talk about for ages so be careful what you ask for <laughs> um so uh so you will set your levels for you one of the things that, and one of the reasons why I'm so keen on levels and loudness, and think it's one of the real basics that people have to get right, is that um, when you use the classic method of measuring levels, you're actually measuring a peak level. You're measuring how loud it is at its loudest point. You're not measuring how loud it is how you know when you listen to it. Um, if you imagine in your head that you were next to a a, a, a bell, and you banged it once, now that's pretty loud, but it passes. If you bang it consistently at the same level on a peak meter, it will look like it is fine because you're hitting that peak that sounds great. But as you know, in reality, we humans, we process volume, not just on the immediate uh, point, but also over time. So things will case. sound louder and louder and louder and louder, even though you're peaking at the same sound. So loudness takes that into account and, and kind of, simulates how we humans hear audio. And what that allows our system to do is, if you imagine that you have a male and a female on, um, on, a, on a podcast, men will typically have a, a louder voice, uh, but they might not measure different values in a true peak situation. But in using loudness, we'll actually be able to bring those two in balance so that they have the same presence in your podcast, which is important. It's important that, you know, your guest or your host don't sound like they're in different places or in different, uh, have different value for the listener since it's all about audio. So we have these kind of functions. We have something called a voice profiler, which is also in narrator. When I, what the pro voice profiler does is, you know, ideally when you set EQ, I mean, okay, let me start another place. Firstly, 
as a voice, as a host, or as a as a voice of artist, it's important that the cadence and the tonality and the uh, of your voice is consistent. You know that that you don't have a morning voice and an afternoon voice. But the reality is, we all do, right? And the way you you get around that is by setting your EQ so that it sounds the same on the time. Now, there's a I'm going to get into trouble for this, but there's a classic misconception in uh, in in particularly I've met in in the voice of our uh, world is that if you have preset plugins for your EQ that'll fix it the problem is that a, a preset is only a very specific way of handle of of treating your voice if your voice changes and you treat it the same way you're not going to get the same result so what we do is we have uh, we encourage you to take a 30 second snippet of your voice uh, that you have actually sat and preferably with somebody who's really good at, at you know, as a, a good engineer and sat and, and EQ'd and, and, and set up the way you want to sound. We will uh, save that in our voice profiler. And then basically what you do every time you record, you can actually apply that voice profile. And what it does, it, do, it does exactly what a sound engineer does. It listens to the original. That's what I want to sound like. It li listens to this particular audio recording. It says, okay, where is this off compared to this? And then it sets the EQ so that it matches that. So even though you went in the morning session and afternoon session had different voices, it would make sure that you sound the same across the board. And it's, it's, it's really, really good sound processing, but it's not magic, it's just logic. And these are the things that we've been able to do. Other things that are really interesting uh, for someone doing podcasting, we've, uh, we have a system which we call a clipboard, which also, by the way, is in Narrator. Now, the clipboard is really handy because it allows you non-destructively to keep snippets or pieces of your audio in an ordered uh, catalog on the right where you can listen back to them. So in a narrator situation, let's say you were doing a multi-voice recording. I was just thinking that, remember. yeah. Exactly. So you've got references there, right? So you take yourself being a child and yourself, being, which is always really odd. But anyway, you take yourself being all these different voices. And by the time you get to chapter seven, I mean, how the hell did that dwarf sound? I can't remember how that. Well, you just go into your favorite, into your, your, your clipboard and you just just play it in the clipboard. Like, right, I got that now. And then you can carry on going. In the podcast, what this allows you to do is, you let's say you had a, a two-hour recording, like someone like me who goes on and on and on, and you want to get <laughs> rid of them. Um, and you can see, I, more than likely, I haven't said more than five minutes that are worth listening to. So you can run through your whole podcast and just grab the bits that are relevant, put them into your clipboard. Then you can just clean out the whole workspace and then just start bringing them back because it's non-destructive. So, you know, every little snippet actually contains the whole audio file, but you're just taking the references of that and you basically can pile it up as an, you know, if you, you know, A, B, C on three tracks, like take one, two, three, four, five, six. And then for what we'll do with music and again, all of it has been set automatically at, at minus 20, uh, minus 21 LUFS, which is the right level inside your inside your workspace. It's not what you're exporting to. It's what you want to be inside your workspace so that you have lots of dynamic range to work with. Now, if you bring music into Hindenburg, it'll say, oh, I recognize that as music. It will actually set the level slightly lower than your voice so that there's a balance again between, you know, if you're in such a hurry that you just want to go voice, music, voice, music, voice, music, dumb, done, you would actually have a perfectly balanced session where the passage from voice to music and back would sound natural and right and balanced. Things that we've also done are made sure that you can very, very fast do a duck or a fade or something like that. Instead of having to go to a second menu and so on, you basically do it in the interface. You look at the waveform, you just take the top of it, drag it down, and you've just set the level lower. If you highlight a piece, drag it in the middle, it'll make a duck underneath and bring it up again automatically. So your fades are coming up on both sides. And they're nice S-curve fades, I promise. People, if you... <laughs> I want another fade. Yes, you probably do, but you're not going to ever really use it because what you need is an S fade. 
he said, sounding condescending. <laughs> um, so, so it's these kind of things. And in, in the latest one, what we just added is transcription. So what that will allow you to do is record your podcast, transcribe it, and then you can use the transcript to quickly edit. You do like a really quick edit of the audio um, in the text. You can highlight text and delete it. It'll delete the audio. You can move bits of it into your clipboards as well from text. You don't have to necessarily look at the waveforms. Again, trying to make it accessible. Now, what you also can do, which you can't do in any other uh, products, is that you, at the same time as you're working in your text, you can actually see what's going on in a full door just above the text. If you know, you can obviously you can move the size of the windows around and you can dock them as you like. But you know, let's imagine you've got your text at the bottom, you've got your tracks at the top. You can see what you're doing to the audio while you're working in the text and you can actually tweak it. So let's say you say you cut a bit out and you just want to put in a fade. Instead of having to uh, assume that some automation is going to do it for you, you can actually look at it, tweak it, and then carry on in the text. So you've got a full integration between audio and text. And what this allows you to do, of course, is search. You can search and find stuff. You can navigate in the audio because you can use the text. You can, uh, it breaks down obviously according to who's speaking. So you've got named, so you can search by Sean or Paul or God forbid, Chris. <laughs> um, and and so find your way around your audio fast. Um, and so we're not the very first to do this. To be honest, we worked on this seven years ago. And at that time we rejected it because of this inaccuracy of transcription at the time, but also because we have a, a, a personal requirement that whatever you're doing has to be mobile. So for our product, you don't have to be online. You don't have, you can, you can do transcription in a plane, in the Savannah, in Sudan, in a war zone, because it's all built in locally and it's really fast. And that's why we waited a bit before we put it out because we want it to be user friendly. It doesn't really help if you're in, if you have to do this online because, you know, the internet is a very multifaceted thing. <laughs> well, I love just it, just how expansive and how in depth these features are, and as you said, it's highly customizable, and it just has so many attractive features for podcasters and narrators. So, thank you. How can podcasters and narrators try and buy the software if they're interested? So at Hindenburg.com. Do I spell it? Well, yeah, probably. This <laughs> we'll, is America. We'll give you a little audio cue at the end. This is America, okay. so you probably need to spell it. <laughs> H-I-N-D-E-N-B-U-R-G.com. Hindenburg.com. Go to the front page. Uh, well, that should put you in the front page, hopefully. And up in the top left corner, there's a little button, button that says trial. That'll bring you to a point where you can choose either the narrator or the pro or both. Uh, to trial for 30 days. Um, the Hindenburg Pro 2, or well, version 2, which we just launched, the trial includes, I want to say 30 hours, but it might only be 10 hours of transcription for that first month. So you get a good feeling for how it really works and how it can help you. Um, and then in terms of pricing, because I'm hoping you're going to ask me that as the next question. Yes, please. Um, so one of the things that we have, which is... I don't think I'm allowed to say this in America, but it's a real pain in the butt is that we've, <laughs> we've, we've continued to have a perpetual license next to our subscription options because we know there are a lot of people that just want that. I just want to pay once. And it's really, I know it sounds, how difficult can that, that be? But it's actually really difficult to manage licenses in a subscription model and a perpetual license next to each other. Anyway, I, no one gave me the Einstein price. Um, then we have, so we have three subscription levels for the pro. We've got a standard version, which is without the transcription, but all the rest of it, which is 12 bucks a month. Or, and we've made a special one uh, offer of that is 99 bucks a year because we want to try and keep it as accessible as possible. Um, so that does just about everything you need, but it doesn't have the transcription uh, features. Then we have a version called a plus version, 
which is um, 15 bucks a year or 158, a sorry, 15 bucks a month or 150 a year, which has 20, uh, 20 hours of transcription. And then we have the big package, which is 30 bucks a month or 300 a year, which is 50 hours of tr transcription. And then we have our perpetual license, which is $399, you know, version two forever. And the first month you get 30 hours of free transcription to try it out. And then we're going to be adding add-on packages. If, if you want to do you know, trans transcription from time to time, you can just go into our web shop and buy a few hours or buy some hours of transcription and use it. On the narrator side, again, we've kept a perpetual license and we have only at this point one subscription um, option, which is the standard one, because we haven't got the one. Um, it's 15 bucks a month or 150 a year. And the narrator option is 499. And the reason why the narrator is more expensive is basically because it got, it's got a whole extra dimension that we have to uh, keep up um, but, you know, hopefully we'll be moving that up to version two with integrations with transcription and so on in the next, well, I have to be careful what I say because the engineers will hate me, but, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, within a reasonable time, so I haven't said anything. Well, that's wonderful, Chris. Totally understand. And, and I love how flexible you are with the pricing options. People can try it for free for a month, and then they can figure out which pricing structure works best for their budget. Mm -hmm. So, Chris, thanks so much for being on the show this afternoon. Uh, we want to know, is there anything else you'd like to promote or talk about with regard to the product before we say goodbye? If anyone hears this podcast, they are more than welcome to send me a personal email and say, why did you forget to make a link for a discount when I heard this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fantastic. And what's that email address? And that is the code word. That is the code word. Chris at Hindenburg.com. And they'll Why get a special VO meter discount? Yes. I love it. I'll give them an extended trial and a 30-day uh, discount on the first year's subscription. Wonderful. That's very generous of you, Chris. Thank you so much. Thanks very much. Thanks for your time. How many times has this happened to you? You're listening to the radio when this commercial comes on. Not unlike this one. And this guy starts talking. Not unlike myself. Or maybe it's a woman that starts talking. Not unlike myself. And you think to yourself, geez, I could do that. Well, mister, well, missy, you just got one step closer to realizing your dream as a voiceover artist. Because now there's Global Voice Acting Academy. All the tools and straight-from-the-hip, honest information you need to get on a fast track to doing this commercial yourself. Well, not this one exactly. Classes, private coaching, webinars, home studio setup, marketing and branding help, members-only benefits like workouts, rate and negotiation advice, practice scripts, and more. All without the kind of hype you're listening to right now. Go ahead, take our jobs from us. We dare you. Speak for yourself, buddy. I like what I do. And you will, too, when you're learning your craft at Global Voice Acting Academy. Find us at globalvoiceacademy.com. Because you like to have fun. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. And we're back. First off, thank you so much to Chris Modis for coming on to the podcast and telling us about your amazing product, Hindenburg. I am super excited about it, and I am, as someone who's kind of diving back into uh, long form, like audiobooks and some video game projects, I am definitely thinking seriously about this or purchasing this software myself. 
Yeah, and as someone who, as you just heard, is in the market for a new DAW, <laughs> I will be looking at <laughs> the timing couldn't be better. I will be looking at Hindenburg pretty heavily as well. And they do have a, a, a sort of a legacy or perpetual license version, if that's something you're interested in. And our listeners can actually take advantage of a special offer that Chris and his team have offered the VO Meter po- or listenership, and that is an extended 60-day trial and a special offer. So, uh, ordinarily, they offer a one-month or 30-day trial for the software, but they're actually offering a additional month, so 60-day trial to try it out, and that's for their Hindenburg Pro software, their Narrator software, or both. So you can get that, and you also receive a 30% discount on the first year of a Hindenburg annual subscription. You can get that by Let's going see. to <laughs> https colon slash slash rebrand dot ly slash meter, and we'll put it on the website as well so you can click on the link. Well, thanks so much, Chris and team, for doing that for us, and we hope you'll take advantage of the discount. So that wraps up this episode of the VO Meter. Measuring your voice over progress. Coming up in our next episode, we have a redux of the public address announcers roundtable. We have a lot of the same guests we had on almost seven years ago now, including the aforementioned Bob Johnson and uh, Adrian Robertson from the Orioles and Mike Norgard, who used to be in our meetup group and has been a guest on the show, also does our bumper for the VO meter reference levels and then a few new faces and uh, and voices as well. So. Look forward to that in the next coming weeks. Awesome. Cannot wait for that. (laughs) Have a great rest of your day. You'll hear us in the next one. Thanks for listening to this episode of the VO Meter. To follow along, visit us at www.vometer.com. We'd also love to hear your comments or suggestions for the show. Or if you have a questionable gear purchase, tell us all about it on our Facebook page or on Twitter at the VO Meter. (laughs) 